Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Melanie Bradford. I am the Curriculum Coordinator for Arts Education at the Ministry of Education. And it's a pleasure to be with you today. I just wanted to thank the BC Principals and Vice Principals Association for this opportunity to talk about the redesigned arts education curriculum. I'm going to forward my slide here. So oh, BC has one of the best education systems in the world, and today we live in really exciting times of constant change. For many, it's a technology-rich world where communication is instant and information is easily accessible. We know the world is rapidly changing, and the way we interact with each other is constantly changing, creating new possibilities for the future. That's why it's critical that we refine our education system so that students can succeed in the 21st century. And for many of us, our children and grandchildren will actually go on to succeed in the 22nd century. So to maintain this high achievement, BC is transforming its education system to one that better engages students in their own learning and fosters the skills and competencies that students need to succeed. One focus for this transformation is on the curriculum and changing it so that it enables and supports personalized learning through quality teaching and learning, flexibility and choice, and maintaining high standards. Personalized learning acknowledges that not all students learn at the same rate or in the same learning environment or in the same way. And the focus on personalized learning is to enhance student engagement and provide students with more choice. One way I like to look at it is the kindergarten students uh, who entered school this year will be part of the graduating class of 2030. And to imagine for a moment what the world will be like when they finish grade 12 and pursue their pass passions after they graduate. In today's webinar, we have the same learning goals. The first is to explore BC's new curriculum model as it relates to arts education. We'll look at what's new, what's the same, and what's the deep structure of the redesigned arts education curriculum. We'll also look at the first people's perspectives and worldviews and how they are incorporated into the arts curriculum. Second, we're gonna learn about BC's new arts education courses for grades 10 through 12. So here is our website with uh, www.curriculum.gov.bc.ca. And we're modernizing the curriculum um, to respond to this changing world. And to develop these new models, we consulted with education experts locally, provincially, and internationally. And we've been working with teachers from around BC, um, with uh, members of the Ministry of Education and other stakeholders, to work together on revising the curriculum to replace the integrated rebirth packages, also known as IRPs. One of the foundational pieces of the redesign curriculum is the educated citizen. This was first articulated in a policy order in the late 80s, and it continues to have meaning today. Uh, the educated citizen was reaffirmed in a series of roundtable discussions back in uh, 2011, and it focuses on um, educated citizens being thoughtful, able to learn, think critically, can communicate information from a broad knowledge. They are creative, flexible, self-motivated, and have a positive self-image. They're capable of making independent decisions, skilled and can contribute to society, productive, they strive for physical well-being, cooperative and respectful of others regardless of their differences. And finally, aware of the rights and prepared to exercise the responsibilities of an individual within the family, the community, Canada, and the world. So as you look through the curriculum drafts, you'll see aspects of the educated citizen embedded throughout. You will also see um, the first people's principles of learning embedded throughout the new curriculum drafts. These principles have provided a crucial lens for the teacher teams when we were drafting um, the curriculum in all areas, including arts education. And the teams put great effort into embedding the Aboriginal knowledge and worldviews um, in authentic and meaningful ways. You'll see these principles embedded in all areas of learning at all grade levels, so that it's an authentic part of every student's learning journey from kindergarten to grade 
2012. Let's take a look at the guiding principles for the curriculum design. As a curriculum coordinator, I follow these closely and hold them near and dear to my heart. The, the guiding principles start out by saying they're concept-based and competency-driven. So what does this mean, concept-based? Well, that means that we use concepts to define the standards of knowledge and skills in each area of learning. That means it's built around higher order standards and key ideas, allowing for more in-depth in exploration and deeper understanding. There's a balance in the curriculum between studying factional information and developing your conceptual understanding in an area. Um, you also see, again, the, the First Peoples Principles of Learning embedded in there. And the competency part is uh, based on two levels of competency. Of course, you have the core competencies that are explicit in the redesign and the curricular competencies that we will focus on a little bit later. The competencies represent a much broader and more adaptable achievement than just a simple set of skills. Continuing on the guiding principles, um, it's important to us that we reduce the prescriptive nature of the curriculum to allow for more flexibility and choice for teachers and for students, and to enable teachers to be creative and innovative in their design of learning experiences, including learning environments. And of course, naturally, assessment and reporting are to align with the redesign of the curriculum. So on this slide, you can see on the left the list of the old or the current IRPs um, for grades 10 through 12. We've got dance, drama, music, and visual arts for arts education. And we've moved towards a redesigned curriculum model that is much um, easier to, to find information and to pull up different aspects based on what you need. When you're looking at our new website or at our new curriculum materials, you'll find introductory materials at the top, one of the top bars there, including an introduction and goals and rationale. The core competencies are represented by the triangles um, in different colors on our website. The big ideas are there in those big circles. And then the learning standards um, include the curricular competencies and the content. We're going to go through those a little deeper for arts education. I would encourage you to look at the introduction and the golden rationale for arts education because the team took um, a lot of time to, to, write about, to write about the rationale for arts education and why it benefits all students and contributes to their development as a well-rounded and educated citizen. So if you're looking for more information, I encourage you to look at that toolbar there. My team of great teachers also wrote the arts education curriculum goals, and we spent um, a great amount of time working through these as well to make them as articulate and concise as possible. The expectation for students in arts education is to develop aesthetically through the core disciplines of dance, drama, music, and visual art, as well as through interdisciplinary forms. So you'll see courses like uh, media arts and musical theater. Students are expected to investigate artistic elements and processes through the artistic habits of mind to understand connections between the arts and human experience. They are to create and respond to works of art using inquiry, critical thinking, and problem-solving skills to deepen their awareness of self, others, and the world. Two more goals here for arts education. Students are expected to recognize the value of a variety of cultural perspectives and explore contemporary and historical art forms from their own identity and cultural heritage, as well as those from others. And finally, the lofty goal of pursuing a lifelong interest in the arts and gain the confidence to create and contribute to the local, national, or global art community as an individual or as a group. All those, um, that information and those goals are available on our website, and I encourage you to read them and send us any feedback. So moving a little closer to the curriculum model now, I wanted to touch on the core competencies. 
We have three main core competencies that are relevant to all the areas of learning, including arts education. And these, along with literacy and numeracy, are at the center of the redesigned curriculum. We have communication, thinking, and personal and social. So these are the sets of intellectual, personal, and social and emotional proficiencies that all students need to develop in order to engage in deep learning and lifelong learning. The core competencies are evident in every area of learning. However, they do manifest themselves uniquely in each discipline, and you'll see that specifically come through in the arts. Many of you are probably aware of the KBU model that we use now for the redesign curriculum. We have the big ideas at the top, which is what students will understand. The uh, content on the bottom right, which is what students will know. And the curricular competencies on the bottom left of what students will be able to do. We're going to dig deeper into what this means for arts education students in a moment. But keep this curriculum model in, in mind as it supports a concept-based and competency-driven approach to learning. If you're looking at our drafts and wondering how that model applies to the Word documents available online, you can see the understand uh, the big ideas at the top there, the U under the curricular competencies on the left, and the know the content on the right, what students are expected to know for each course. So oh, let's take some time to dig a little deeper into the model. Here are the big ideas. These are the generalizations, principles, and key concepts that are important for an area of learning. They're also incredibly difficult and wonderful to write because they really make you think hard about what's important for students to understand. They reflect the understand component of the KDU model. So here for Musical Theater 12, we have a couple examples, such as Musical theater is informed by the history, culture, community, and value system in which it exists. And you'll see these big ideas apply to different courses in the arts, as well as across all um, areas of learning, such as science, English language arts, social studies, and many others. Here are the curricular competencies. Remember, these are the skills, strategies, and processes that students develop over time. This reflects the do, the doing in the redesigned curriculum model. For arts education, I have an example here from instrumental music. And in arts, we uh, decided to use the artistic habits of mind to organize our curricular competencies. So this is new for the K-12 curriculum in the arts. They, the artistic habits of mind um, that we've decided to use are exploring and creating, reasoning and reflecting, communicating and documenting. And then for grades 10 through 12, we added connecting and expanding. So for kindergarten to grade nine, you'll see the top three. And then we expanded that to connecting and expanding for grades 10, 11, and 12. Content. So each discipline, especially in the arts, has really specific and unique content that it's content that is important to um, to include in the curriculum. This includes elements, processes, and strategies that's important for each discipline. And this is what students are expected to know. So here, for example, is Dance Technique and Performance 10. You can see that students are expected to know, for example, elements of dance, body, space, time, dynamics, and relationships. If you go down a little bit more, they're expected to know kinesthetic and spatial awareness, as well as rehearsal skills, performance skills, and dance notation. In the curriculum model where you see a word that is bold, that indicates where we've added an elaboration to give more information or specific examples about what we mean by those terms. So let's look at arts education as a whole and talk about what's new and what's the same. First, from kindergarten to grade nine, we have a unified kindergarten to grade eight curriculum for dance, drama, music, and visual arts. And this was mandated in 2016. In grade nine, we took a very interesting and unique approach to provide options for schools and students. We have a, a grade nine unifo unified curriculum as well as a discipline specific curriculum to support the variety of school structures. 
Um, for example, you could have kind of a general arts education nine program at your school, or you could have a specific music nine or uh, visual arts nine course at your school. For grades 10 through 12, for what's new, my team worked incredibly hard on redesigning 58 courses in grades 10, 11, and 12, all of which are dis discipline specific. And this includes 22 new courses, all of which are posted online for feedback, and we would love to get your feedback on it. As I mentioned earlier, the Artistic Habits of Mind serve as organizers for the curricular competencies from kindergarten to grade 12. You'll also see an increased flexibility and space for teacher innovation, student passions, and greater depth of study in all four areas, with a strong focus on inquiry and project-based hands-on learning experiences for students and interdisciplinary approaches and opportunities. In terms of what's the same, you will still see content relating to each specific discipline, dance, drama, music, and visual arts. This will include the elements and processes, skills and techniques that are essential for all of those areas. You will still see very rigorous learning standards in each discipline and a focus on the creative and artistic processes with discipline-specific language in each course. There are still connections between grades and across the areas of learning to support multi-year program models. And you will see a strong emphasis in the STEM of, in every course on the engagement of students in creative processes. So I've given you a lot of information so far. I just wanted to stop and take a moment to reflect on the information in this presentation. Just take a moment and write down or think about something so far that you've learned and something that you already knew and something that you want to move to know more about. So something you've learned about the arts education curriculum, something you already knew and could perhaps share with a colleague, and something you want to know more about as we continue the presentation. Just going to give you a minute here to think about that, think about all the slides and all the information we just covered. Okay, hopefully you can answer one of those questions. Um, one of the most popular questions I get as the arts education coordinator is, how are the core competencies and Aboriginal perspectives embedded into the arts curriculum? Because at first glance, you might not quite see where, how it all comes together. So I did a very quick analysis here of Drama 10 and identified um, with the triangles where some linkages to the core competency. There aren't one-to-one -one linkages here because a lot of them are vetted uh, nicely throughout a, a variety of learning standards, but you can see some main ones there. So in the, the red triangle is represents communication. The green one is the personal and social uh, curricular, or sorry, core competency, excuse me. And the blue one is the thinking core competency. You can see those um, across Drama 10 here. The yellow highlights uh, represent ways and areas where the Aboriginal perspectives and worldviews have been embedded throughout the course. A lot of the times, the personal and social core competencies and the Aboriginal worldviews line up really nicely um, in the learning standard. Here's the second page of Drama 10. You can see that it's um, coming up quite nicely in terms of representing the core competencies. And in many areas, you'll see elaborations that explain further the connection um, to the First Peoples' perspectives. Okay, the next most popular question I get is, what is the actual list of all the grade 10 through 12 courses? So here's the list for, for dance, drama, music, and visual arts. We're going to go into some of these courses in a little more detail. Um, but you'll see Dance Foundations 10, 11, 12, Drama 10, 11, 12, um, Music 10, 11, 12, Art Studio 10, 11, 12. A couple courses to note are Musical Theatre 10, 11, 12, and Media Arts 10, 11, 12 as well. So let's go a little bit more into more detail. Here is the slide you've been waiting for, the new arts education courses for grades 10 through 12. We're really pleased with this list that we've added 22 new courses to 
to the area of learning, including contemporary music, 10, 11, 12. Chamber choir has been added to choral music, 10, 11, and 12. The very highly anticipated and wonderful new chorus, photography, 10, 11, and 12. We're pleased to offer that as a provincial curriculum. For dance, uh, we have dance foundations, 11 and 12, dance company, 10, 11, 12, as well as dance conditioning, 11 and 12. So the dancers can work on their fitness through the conditioning course. We also have theater company, 10, 11, and 12, that has been added, and also highly anticipated musical theater, 10, 11, 12, for those students to take an inter interdisciplinary approach in the arts. Some of these courses were previously um, BAA courses, the Board Authority Authorized Courses, and now they, as I mentioned, have been uh, changed to provincial level curriculum. So we'll just take a quick glance at each discipline. On the left side, you can see the old or the current IOP for, for uh, dance. So we have Dance 10 has now been, uh, the name has changed to Dance Foundations, and the 11 and 12 have been added. We still have choreography 10, 11, and 12, but of course it's been updated for the new curriculum model. Dance company is new. Uh, dance technique has, the word technique has been added to the course title there, and dance conditioning is new for grades 11 and 12. For drama, uh, drama 10, 11, and 12 are still in place, and aspects of theater performance um, are now in the drama 11 and 12 curriculum. The same goes for theater production. 10, 11, and 12 uh, remains in place, but of course redesigned. And technical theater and theater management, management, you'll see some of those concepts in the theater production course. We have the new theater company. Film and television uh, remains in place, as well as directing and script development, 11 and 12. And the new musical theater course for 10, 11, and 12. For music, as I mentioned earlier, chamber choir has been added. Choral music includes uh, concert choir, chamber choir, and vocal jazz. It's important to note for instrumental music, 10, 11, and 12, this includes concert band, orchestra, jazz band, and guitar, and each of those uh, courses do have their own course code. We've added contemporary music, 10, 11, and 12, and composition and technology is now called composition and production for 11 and 12. In visual arts, you will see uh, art foundations renamed to art studio, 10, 11, and 12. Ceramics and sculpture is now sculpture, 10, 11, and 12. And you will see um, the materials and processes of ceramics embedded into the sculpture course. Drawing and painting remains the same. And photography has been added, as I mentioned. Printmaking and graphic design has been renamed to graphic arts, 11, and 12. And under the arts education umbrella, we have media arts, 10, 11, and 12. And there is also a media design course for grades 10, 11, and 12 in the applied design skills and technologies area of learning. So you'll see uh, six courses there for media arts and media design. If you need more information about these courses, I encourage you to look at the BC Curriculum Comparison Guide. This was released by the Ministry of Education in July. And this provides um, a detailed information about what the existing IRPs uh, are or were and how that lines up with the new curriculum. So we've done the matching for you and you can see the old and the new. And in addition to that, we have provided kind of a general overview of each course. You can see what the new course entails. Again, that document is available on the ministry's website in all the areas of learning, not just arts education. Oh, in terms of next steps, um, starting now, the fall 2017, until the early spring, we are bringing our teacher teams back together and having curriculum team meetings, which we're really excited about. Um, as a team, we will be reviewing and analyzing all the feedback we've received on, uh, the, on the curriculum drafts. And I really strongly encourage you to send in any feedback you have, because we do look through everything. We will then revise and edit the curriculum drafts based on the feedback that we've received and translate those in uh, drafts into French. In the spring of 2018, we will post the final curricula on the ministry website. And in July, the grade 10 to 12 curriculum will be ready for use in the 2018-19 school year.
just looking at the time here, I only have one more slide. If you need more information or any support materials, we do have a lot of uh, great information on the ministry's website with resources and links, with some videos about the curriculum model, um, as well as instructional samples on how all these all teachers have uh, used and applied the new curriculum in their classroom. Um, TeachBC is also a great resource for instructional materials made by teachers. So well, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, here's our website and our email address, curriculum at gov.bc.ca. You are more than welcome to email us any feedback about the curriculum. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Melanie, for giving us that very comprehensive overview on arts education. And so just a couple of questions uh, before we close. Um, first off, just a comment. Uh, so gratified to see that uh, what would have lar probably been board approved courses in a number of districts are now part of the curriculum, particularly in those areas that were 10 to 12, where there's a number of, uh, I was thinking more of sort of the, the theater arts programming that has been done. So I know that we well received in schools. Um, one of the interesting pieces, and, I, and I'll say this on behalf of sort of elementary and middle school principals as well, too is that um, often teachers at that level are generalists and don't have a lot of uh, training or expertise in art education. And so I'm just wondering um, what type of supports and resources would you recommend to ensure that uh, teachers are able to deliver a quality arts program at the elementary and middle level? Yeah, I know that's a great question. And we're happy um, as well to see these courses become provincial curriculum. Um, one of the ways that will um, support the different uh, teaching scenarios is through the instructional samples that our teachers are, are working on and will be providing based on their experiences in the classrooms across British Columbia, whether they're in uh, Metro Vancouver or up north or in a rural community. So I think uh, really through those instructional samples made by teachers for teachers that will help um, give uh, teachers examples and ideas of how they can um, helps their students succeed with this new curriculum. All right, thank you. So I, I noticed you made mention of the educated citizen that's in the school act, that definition, which I think is held up well since it was originally written in the 80s, and also talked about the principles of learning. But I was quite curious about the habits of mind approach, the artistic habits of mind, and wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that. Sure, yes. So. The artistic habits of mind um, came out of research out of Harvard University, and it looked at the way um, arts teachers are are setting up their their curriculum and their classroom classrooms to teach students, and then through research and evidence based approach, looked at what the students are actually learning, and what they found was these artistic habits of mind are transferable to all areas of learning and are really supported through the arts, through exploration and creativity and reflection and connecting and expanding these concepts that you would learn um, in the arts or in your math class, but through the arts. And so that's where that came from, through, through research and a literature review. Great. Well, thank you again, Melanie. Um, I think I'm going to bring our uh, our webinar to a close right now. People do have contact information. As you said, you're looking for feedback from the field in terms of the draft curriculum with an eye to implementation at the beginning of the school year in 2018. So I'm sure uh, you'll get some feedback from our participants and from teachers and principals and vice principals around the province. So we appreciate the opportunity to give feedback on the curriculum as well. And also just to thank you for making time for us today. I think for as we move forward on this transformation agenda and with, uh, uh, with an ambitious curriculum, I, I know it's important that uh, we continue the conversation and the partnership back and forth about how we can best serve students as we work through this new curriculum. So thank you again for making some time for us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. And with that, I will bring it to a close. Um, for our participants, we will be sending out Melanie's PowerPoint to you as well. And we will post this on our YouTube channel as quickly as possible so others out there can take advantage of it well. And with that, um, I will bring it to a close. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Have a great day.